Hey everybody, happy Monday to you. I hope that your week is off to a great start. I took today off because yesterday was one of those crazy 13 hour pastor days where I was just going, 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 which is common for the Lenten season for clergy. And so I woke up this morning and I just knew I needed to rest and catch up on stuff around the house. Um, and the weather was really nice today. It was sunny and warm. And so I got to take the dogs for a walk. It was just a really wonderful day. So I hope you had a great day too, wherever you are doing whatever you are doing. As we enter into a new week in Lent, we have um, a new kind of topic from Ab Adam Hamilton's devotional book on the way. And so this week is all about the healing ministry that Jesus did. And um, it doesn't go along perfectly with the sermon that I preached yesterday on uh, Jesus um, lamenting and yearning for Jerusalem to come to him and likening himself to a mother hen who longs for her chicks. So it doesn't go along perfectly like the week before did, but I kind of like that, that it's different material than what I'm preaching on on Sundays because then it doesn't get too repetitive. Um, so I hope that you enjoy this week of uh, just devotional themes and readings from Adam Hamilton's book. Tonight we're gonna to be talking about rejection. So I talked about this a little bit yesterday in my sermon because Jesus was rejected from the Pharisees, the leaders of the law. So many people rejected Jesus and he grieved it because he was the savior that they were waiting for and they just passed him right by and did not let him gather them in as he had hoped. Um, and so this is one of the times yesterday, you know, what I was talking about in Luke 13, that Jesus faces rejection. But the truth is Jesus gets rejected a lot, a lot. And one of the first times we see Jesus face rejection is when he is in his hometown of Nazareth. And that is what tonight's devotional is going to focus on Luke chapter four, when Jesus is rejected in Nazareth. Um, I know all of us can relate to this, right? Again, this is the humanity of Christ um, where he knows what we have been through and all of us have been through rejection. Maybe rejection in a friendship or in a relationship, maybe rejection from somebody we liked when we were dating or we still are dating. Maybe rejection from a job and we had applied for the job and gone in for a second interview and a third interview and we we're so excited and they rejected us. Um, maybe it was in your work and you pitched a wonderful idea in the midst of a presentation and you were so hoping your boss would go with it or that the company would implement it and they rejected it. And even to this day, maybe 30 years later, you're thinking, man, I'm still upset about that, right? Rejection is just hard. So tonight, um, I pray that these words and the truth of who our savior is really bring you comfort and um, kind of this knowledge of knowing that your savior understands you on, in a deep, deep way because anytime you are rejected and you are feeling so discouraged, you can know that Jesus has been there too. Um, so here are these words from Adam Hamilton. Jesus had just returned home Oh, first, I want to read the um, scripture. So this is Luke chapter 4, 16, and then 29. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. They got up, drove him out of town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. What? So I've been rejected before plenty of times. Friends, boyfriends, people I wanted to date, places I wanted to work, churches, congregants. I could literally keep going. I've been rejected a lot. But I have never had anyone try and hurl me off a cliff before. So that is something that Jesus has experienced that I have not. Okay, now here are these words from Adam Hamilton. 
Jesus had just returned home after two or three month journey that included his baptism by John and 40 days of fasting in the wilderness. On the Sabbath, he entered the small synagogue in Nazareth to preach what may have been his very first sermon in his hometown. Jesus's family was present along with those who had grown up with him and those who had watched him grow up. Jesus all but announced that he was the Messiah coming to bring good news to the poor. He went on to make it clear that he would minister not only to the Jews, but to the Gentiles as well. It was Jesus's willingness to minister with Gentiles that most upset those in the synagogue. Pondering this, I could not help but think about politics in America. In some churches, a pastor who admitted voting Democrat would have been run out of their congregation, while others, a pastor who admitted on voting Republican, would suffer the same fate. Our convictions about who is in and who is out and who is loved by God and who is not loved by God run deep. Jesus' reference to the Gentiles receiving the grace of God infuriated many in the synagogue in Nazareth. By the time he was finished, the men of the synagogue were so angry that they dragged him outside and planned to throw him off a cliff. Had he been... Had that been my first experience preaching in my own hometown, I think it would have been safe to say that it would have been my last experience preaching. I would have just given up. This would not be the last time Jesus was rejected. The religious leaders would reject him again and again and again. Even many of his followers would turn away. At times, people would beg him to leave their town. One of his disciples would betray him. The others would deny knowing him. Ultimately, he would be crucified. Rejection. Rejection sucks. Rejection is a part of life. We all know it from time to time. After experiencing rejection, there comes the temptation to give up. It hurts and we don't like being hurt. So we choose never again to say or do things that cause us to be rejected. There are times when our rejection comes because we missed the mark. In those cases, we have to learn from rejection, allowing it to be a springboard for getting it right the next time. But there are other times when what we said or did was right, yet it led to our rejection. Every great leader in the Bible and every great leader throughout history knew this type of rejection. What made those leaders great, however, was that they refused to give up. When you have been criticized, persecuted, or rejected for saying and doing what is right, remember to follow the example of Jesus when he refused to give up in the face of rejection. I love that devotional and I really feel like it resonates to be true. Our liturgy and our words for worship yesterday had a lot of aspects of not giving up. Um, you know, if you remember Luke 13, the Pharisees were like, get out of town. And he said, I still have stuff to do. I still have healing. I still have exercising of demons. I still have teaching. I'm not done. And I'm not going to let you bully me. And I feel like the same happens throughout all of his ministry is he refuses to give up despite persecution and criticizing and people trying to arrest him and kill him. And then they do. He never stops. He is truly a man on a mission. And so I don't know what rejection you have recently faced, but if you're being honest, I'm guessing you have reject, uh, faced rejection recently. I have, totally. Um, and it doesn't feel good. It never gets better. Just because you get older doesn't mean it gets easier. Um, but I would encourage you to really let the words from tonight sink into your soul and most importantly, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you and remind you that we are Easter people. We are people that know that there is always going to be resurrection after death and there is always going to be redemption after rejection. And the worst thing is never the last thing. And so if you are facing rejection and you are just confused and frustrated and disappointed, remember that this is not the end of your story. Just like the rejection Jesus faced wasn't the end of his story.
It wasn't. It was a part of it that wasn't fun, um, but keep going. Keep fighting the good fight. Keep speaking truth. Keep doing the right thing. Keep showing up and doing the work because the Lord sees it. And I pray that if you ever need an encouragement of a text or a message, you would call on me because we're in this together, right? Have a great rest of your evening. I hope to finish laundry, watch a little TV, and then go to bed. See you tomorrow. Bye.